Good evening and thank you for joining us for tonight's cybersecurity webinar. My name is Jaime Donias with Valley Strong Credit Union, and I'm joined this evening by Anna Sharoni, Valley Strong's Chief Information Security Officer. Before we begin, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items. We plan to answer questions from the audience. To submit a question, please click on the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. We will answer as many questions as we can live. And if you feel your question has not been answered through the presentation, please fill, please fill out the survey after the webinar and supply your contact information. Someone will reach out to you directly to answer your question. Some questions may be more appropriate to be discussed at an appointment. If this is the case, we will respond to you with Anna's contact information and then dismiss your question. We have lots of information to cover tonight, so I'm going to turn my video off now so we can discuss and focus on the presentation. And I'd like to begin by introducing our speaker. Anna Sharoni is the Chief Information Security Officer for Valley Strong. She has over 30 years of cybersecurity experience. 16 of those years as a C-level executive in cybersecurity for privacy for large institutions in the financial services, insurance, healthcare, and pharmaceutical sectors and nonprofits. Anna routinely consults with CEOs, CFOs, board members, and audit committees on cybersecurity issues and strategies. Through her, through her nonprofit work, Anna has provided support for hundreds of injured men and women in her armed forces serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, and around the world. She's also a mom of a Marine and soldier who both proudly serve our country. With that, we now hand it over to Anna Sharoni. Welcome. Thank you for that very nice introduction. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just making sure I can advance my slide here. Uh, Okay, there we go. Um, so it's, it's a true pleasure to be here this evening. And some of the items that we're going to be covering this evening is risky behaviors um, with teenagers, um, recognizing online predators, um, also reminding that you know if you if a child is a victim of an online predator that's been talking with the um, predator themselves, you know, it's not their fault at all. And we really want to emphasize that, that it's no one's fault when you become a victim of any online criminal. But, you know, what do you do when that happens? How do you prevent it? Um, how do you report it? And and also we're going to talk about cyberbullying and how not to feed the cyberbullies. And as a parent, what do you need to do if your child becomes a victim of a cyberbully? We're also going to talk about current threats today that are happening, the phishing, the social engineering, identity theft, and ransomware. We're going to cover what they are, how do you protect yourself from becoming a victim, and if you do become a victim, what do you need to do going forward? Um, there are so many uh, resources out there today, which we're going to provide a document um, with the survey um, for you to be able to go all to all these different links that we're going to talk about today to get information that will help you to protect your children and your parents. We can't forget our, our, our parents and, of course, to protect yourself from online criminals. I'm sorry, I'm having a little problem advancing my slides. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, what we wanna talk about with risky behaviors, and these are great conversations to have with your children, and even sometimes for ourselves. You know, sometimes we get upset about something and then we can end up sending a message that will be out there forever. Um, and one of the things with children, um, we have to make sure they understand what hate speech is, um, using profanities or threatening some threatening uh, threatening someone online. Um, what what can happen to them if they're doing that? What happens to the victim when that happens? Uh, sharing inappropriate photos, drinking, drug use, offensive gestures, revealing or suggestive images. Um, many of times when those things are shared, you you know I can already tell you you've lost control. Once they're shared electronically, they can be used against you in the present or in the future. And they can be used to bully you or even blackmail you. Um, and they will be used without your permission because as I just mentioned, you've already given away your control. 
Um, having teenagers that are talking about adult sub subjects is, is not good. We need to really educate them to let them know what's appropriate conversations for conversations you don't want to be having, especially online. Um, visiting of adult sites, even um, from children doing that to uh, adults doing that. Um, besides of being inappropriate, if you're doing that, your chances are you're probably getting some malware loaded on your um, PC. Uh, because those sites are highly infected with malware um, because they're, they're, they're just sites that are, are um, hosting um, usually criminal activities in many cases. So one of the things is um, always with risky behavior, think before you share. Uh, I can't emphasize once it's shared electronically, it's out there forever. Um, you know, and when you do these things, it will spread very quickly. Children need to understand that they're putting themselves at risk. Um, and the information that you share, even if you say to someone, oh, don't share this with anyone, it's so easily to do from um, social media sites, texting, emails. Um, they can just be easily shared with whoever has access to that. They can save them for for later um, if they even don't share them today. Um, they're eventually probably will reach people you don't want to see, uh, to see that information, schools, employers, and if they're threatening law enforcement. Um, and this could be years down the road. And a lot of the teens today need to realize, and many of them do, is that when I do something today, how will it affect me later? Um, and in many cases, it can keep them from going into schools. It can prevent them getting their dream job. Um, so these are things we have to be very careful before things are shared. Um, and there's always good questions to share with your teens um, to ask themselves. Before I share this, who might I hurt? How, you know, do, do, do I like what this says about me as a person? How does this impact my future? Very important question, along with who am I hurting? Um, could this get me in trouble with law enforcement, school, parents? How does this affect my family and my friends and schoolmates? Because it's just not them that might be affected. It might be you know, family and friends that are also affected because of what they're sending and, uh, and what they're saying. So recognizing online predators, um, this happens more than you think. Um, these predators are very good and they're very well organized and they know how to go after uh, young individuals. Um, they're usually male. Um, of course, they're not honest with their age. You know, they'll put that picture up of, uh, you know, a nice looking athletic young man or a pretty woman um, or whatever it may be that they feel will attract the person that they're stalking and pretend to be that individual. So of course, they target both females and males. Um, they will pay you all the compliments that you will ever want to have. They might even send you gifts, um, but realize they are not honest of their real intentions. They want to hurt you. They want to take you away from your family. They'll ask you to keep secrets, so they're building that trust with you. Um, they will try to discuss adult subjects. Um, they will definitely turn you away from your family and friends. If you're having a bad moment with your family or friends and you're sharing this with an online predator, believe me, they're going to take your side, even if what's happening is really something that you did and you're being punished accordingly. And, um, you know, but they will take your side and try to turn you away from your family and friends so you don't have anybody to go to. Um, they'll uh, ask for revealing images. This is to be used to blackmail you, um, that they will share them with, you know, everyone you know um, if you don't do what they ask. Um, and they are attracted to certain behaviors. Um, you know, if they really go after individuals, that are you know probably having some you know difficulty in their life they're being bullied um they're um visiting like adult sites you know they're able to track some of these things depending on you know what reconnaissance they've done to their selective victim so they they're, they look for certain behaviors that they know that they can easily manipulate and sometimes even if people are not, not having struggles in their life they'll still try to manipulate you no one's exempt from an online predator. If they have you in, your, in their crosshairs, they will do everything to come after you. 
But we all have to remember when we become a victim of a, a, a cyber criminal, a, a predator, a scam, it is not your fault. And we also, we have to really make sure our children understand that, that they can come and talk to us. We're not going to blame them. We're not going to punish them. We're, we want to protect them. But we want kids to know, don't engage if someone is reaching out to you and you don't know who it is. Block them. Do not meet with them. Please do not meet with them. And tell an adult that you trust. Tell your parents, a teacher. Um, even law enforcement, tell someone that you trust that you feel that you're in harm's way. Um, no one is going to blame you. You know, report anyone who sends you adult images, talks to you about adult subjects, ask to meet you offline. Um, and for parents, these are some great resources out there today. You know, if your child is having, you know, being, um, stalked by a predator, please reach out to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. They have a tip line, they have an 800 number, and reach out to law enforcement and they will help you walk through this process. There's so many great resources out there today that want to help you and protect you and your family. So I was wondering, is there any questions that you might have at this time? Yes, we actually received a couple. Oh, great. Uh, so first question is, uh, how can I know and control what my children are doing online? You know, there's some great uh, parental controls uh, software out there that allows you to monitor and limit your children and what they see and do online. The other thing is you want to do is have that conversation with them first, <coughs> excuse me, and, and talk to them about the dangers and understand that if you have a, a phone or a mobile device, understand, let them know what the rules of engagement are, what you will allow them to do, what you're doing um, to protect them. And, you know, as your child grows older, you know, it's best to equip them with the skills and the knowledge to protect themselves from being online, uh, like warning signs like we just talked about, inappropriate content and malicious websites that they need to be aware of and understand these, these are situations that are only going to hurt them. Very good. And th the second question is kind of related uh, to the first. Uh, the, this viewer is asking, my child's school is not adequately addressing harassment based on race, color, natural or national origin, sex, disability, and religion. Who can I call for help? Yeah, so there's a, a diff, uh, several lines that you can go to. Um, like, so one of you, you can go to the principal of the school, the school superintendent. You can go to the State Department of Education. Uh, Department of Education, Office for Civil Rights, and also you can also go to the Department of Justice, um, the Civil Rights Division. So there's a lot of resources that you can escalate your 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 concerns. That's all we have for now. Uh, okay. So if you'd like, we can proceed with the presentation. Great, thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about cyberbullying. Um, it's not funny, and it really hurts. Words truly matter, and and making sure that your teens and you know even preteens are aware of what cyberbullying is. You know, creating a hate group about someone. You know, this is devastating for that individual posting mean or, or mean comments online. And you gotta remember, these stay out there. These don't go away. It's, it's not even, you know, verbal is bad enough, but when it's online, it stays out there and constantly, re, you know, replace itself to the victim of cyberbullying. Um, photoshopping, you know, so, you know to, to Photoshop something to humiliate an individual, you know, that's, that's bullying. Uh, recording and posting fights, you know, you see that all the time on the internet. You know, if someone's fighting, call an adult to get it to stop. Don't record it and don't post the fights. You know, spreading rumors and gossip through text messages and social media is painful in so many ways. You know, think about if somebody was doing that to you. How would you feel before ever doing that to someone else? Really think before you act. 
and if you if you ever have someone who steals someone's identity and creates a fake profile, that's illegal, right? That's criminal. And you can have, um, you know, uh, you could be prosecuted for those things. And, and these things are just wrong. But sometimes what's sad is that someone else might be doing it. And then sadly, um, you know, the kids get pulled into it that didn't even start it. So one, the thing is to understand if you are a victim of cyberbullying, don't respond. Please don't respond. Um, and you can block the bully, save the evidence. That's very important, right? A lot of times we see something horribly being done to us and uh, we want to delete it because hopefully it will be forgotten. But, you know, save the evidence, talk to your children about saving the evidence. Um, if, and you know, if you need to set up new accounts, but please let your children know to talk to you, um, to talk to an adult that they trust and make a report. Um, and from the parent side, you know, I, I know what it's like, you know, I have three children um, and if somebody was attacking my child, no matter what age it is, you know, I wanna respond, but I have, you have to take a step back and keep a cool head and remind your, you know, remind your child that most people no bullying is wrong. This is particularly one individual that might have some people following them, but you're going to help them address the issue, and you're going to, you know, tell your child not not to respond in any shape or form to the bullying. Um, you will incur you should encourage him or her to work with you to save the evidence and talk about what's happening and how you're there for them. Um, and then if the bullying, bullying persists where wherever you feel that, hey, this is out of hand and we need to take action right away, share the records of what you saved with school officials. And just as like I've mentioned to that wonderful question that was asked, you know, talk to the teacher, the school counselor, the principal, you know, escalate it accordingly where you feel it's appropriate. appropriate. And if you're not getting the answers um, that you need and then escalate it up to, um, Department of Education, and even the Department of Justice if needed. And there's gonna be some great sites in the, the document that we will give you after the um, presentation that will be included with um, the survey that will really help you, you know, even get more information than I'm providing today. Very important to talk to our children um, not to be part of cyberbullying. Never feed the cyberbullies. You know, if you if one of your your teens or preteens has somebody that uh, one of their friends is a cyberbully, let your children know. Please do not participate. Don't forward the rumors or or the the photographs that are humiliating to an individual. Don't be part of it. Don't comment on it. Don't. Don't encourage it, you know, don't, oh yeah, that's great. No, it's not. You know, really stand up for the victim and say, this is wrong. Don't participate. Um, always treat others with respect. Always remember, is that how I want to be treated? No, and why would you treat someone else that way? Um, document what you see and when uh, and, and report it. Very important to do. And these, again, are conversations to always have with our children um, because the internet, it's just not always a good place to be. And a lot of things can happen where normally before the internet and um, cell phones and everything else, it would take a lot of uh, action between a lot of individuals to really coordinate a cyberbullying attack. Now all it takes is a phone. So we're gonna move on to uh, the current threats that we're facing today, um, which are on, you know, over, 600% uptick since COVID-19, the phishing attacks, the social uh, engineering attacks, uh, identity theft attacks. I got three phone calls today myself from Amazon, uh, which I know were fake. Um, so we're gonna talk about what you can do to protect yourself from the criminals because they are truly taking advantage of the times today with COVID-19 to do their dirty work. They, they love when we are in fear of you know something happening, and um, you know they want to take advantage of us at, at our weakest moment. Uh, these um, bad actors and adversaries are just not good people at all. So one of the things is when we're we're talking about the phishing emails and the texting and the phone calls that we're getting, it's very important before engaging in any communication, take caution and stop to ensure 
it is from a secure source, a known party. Always remember, no matter what email you get or what text message you get, and we'll go through some examples or phone calls you get, you don't need to respond to that. If you feel that you need to call the person you think there, that there may be an issue, call them directly on the number that you know is valid. Don't ever return these calls until you validate that you know this is who they are. You know, this has been going on for so many years and it still works. You know, the bad guys don't do things that don't make profit. And um, the social security scams are still working. Um, we need to educate our parents. You know, my father is 79 years old. Um, and, you know, I constantly, when he had the internet the one time, I would constantly remind him in a very gentle way, you know, when in doubt, dad, if you get, you know, an email, don't respond to it. Give me a call. I'll help you walk you through it. Um, I made sure that his computer had all the latest patches on it, had all the right security tools on it to keep them as safe as possible, but sometimes things do get through. Um, the IRS, IRS scams are just unbelievable. They're extremely profitable for the bad guys. Phishing scams, uh, texting messages, you know, the fake check scams, you know, uh, oh, you overpaid, or if you deposit a check, we'll give you more money. Um, you know, these are still working, and they're, you know, if they're making money, they'll, they'll continue to do them. You know, some of the, the newer scams that are coming out today, which are, you know, heartbreaking in, in so many ways, and actually I, I have a, a friend who's an FBI agent actually got one of these calls um, that his daughter was kidnapped. Um, and uh, it was a scam, which was good that it was a scam. She wasn't really kidnapped, but she, he was able to walk through all of this and know that it was a scam because he had all the right questions to ask. But what they're doing today is, you know, they're they're calling or texting um, either the parent or the grandparent. A lot of times they go after the grandparents. Um, they can send, a, you know, text a picture of the child that they probably just grabbed off the internet. And you know, if you all, everyone here Google's themselves, um, you know, see how many pictures of you show up. Uh, probably quite a few. Um, and then, you know, or they probably got the picture from a social media account that they've been monitoring. Um, and what these scammers will do is they will also send frightening pictures of dismembered body, body parts, um, threatening the, the, the family member that if you don't pay, um, we're going to do this to your child, we're going to kill your family, we know where you live, don't call the police. The first thing you need to do is report this to the local police right away before you do anything else. And then they will walk you through what needs to be done and they'll contact the, the, the right individuals to help you through that process. But this is happening more than you, and most people can imagine. The other thing that's come up is real big uptick on the um, FTC website is that they're doing the, um, the impersonator is pretending there's someone from the US Immigrant and Customs uh, Enforcement, ICE, and they're telling the individual that if you don't pay up, the, you know, the police are on the way, they're gonna arrest you and they're gonna report you, you know, you gotta give us that money right away. No matter what kind of call you get, you know, some, to anything like this, please stop and think. And what should you do? Don't respond to the calls or texts, don't pay. Even if, you know, they just seem so threatening and so real. Um, Report these scams immediately to your local police department and also to the FTC. There's a website that you can go to to report it. Set your social um, set your social media accounts to private because that's a lot of times where they're getting that information. They're grabbing pictures and personal information of you and your friends and your friends. Um, and please know that know, know that the government will not call you or text text you to threaten you and ask you for money. They just won't do that. But if for some reason you have an agency that, well, maybe I, 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 want, to connect, I want to contact them um, just to make sure that this isn't real, which it wouldn't be, 
but for some reason for you know just a piece of piece um, you know call the agency's real number go out on the internet not the number that they called you from go on the internet and get the agency real number and ask them what the story is and they're probably going to tell you it's a scam but if you need that to do that please do that and always please report these um, horrible scams that are just flooding us uh, with COVID-19. So during the um, COVID-19, uh, the FTC has put these great reports together um, and you can actually do it by state. All you need to do is click on the state. Um, when you go to that link, you click on the state and it'll tell you um, the, 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 the scams that are happening, how much money's being lost, um, how many have been reported, um, what type they are, online shopping, vacation, travel, and then you can even dr drill down more into seeing what the scams are. And there's other sites um, within the FTC that you can actually get information almost on every scam that's going on out there today. So the current phishing attacks, um, I know probably everybody um, at this workshop know what a phishing attack is. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll just go over it very lightly. It's basically a phishing attack and come in to, with emails, text messages, even phone calls. And what they're trying to do is through these attacks, they're trying to get you to share your personal information, um, social security numbers, login IDs, passwords, never give anyone your social security number unless you know it's a, you know, it's a legit person that you're working with, logon IDs and passwords. And these guys are pretty good at this. You know, uh, guys and girls are really good at this. They've been trained well. Um, they're very well organized um, to try to get your information because it's profitable to them. The other thing is what they're trying to do um, with the phishing attacks mostly is they're trying to get you to click on emails or you know even text messages so they can ins install malware on your device. And mobile devices are just as vulnerable now today as PCs are if you're not doing all the right things to protect yourself. But when you get that ransomware, um, and we'll go through that a little bit, um, it's a pretty scary moment. Your heart will drop when you see the, the message that comes up if, you, if you've been a victim of a ransomware attack. Um, so these are just things you got to be very cautious. It's just like, you know, we always lock our front doors and our windows and we have alarm systems on our houses, you know, and we have cameras and all those things. We have to take the same due diligence on our, our, on our uh, mobile devices and our PCs to protect us from the bad individuals that are out there today that don't have to come to your front door. All they got to do is have an internet connection and um, to make your life miserable. Because when they do this, it, it's, it's, um, it's just not a good feeling at all. And trying to recover from a ransomware attack can be very difficult if you're not prepared. So what, what are some of the things um, I can do to protect myself, to not to be, uh, you know, not to um, take the bait, not to bite, not avoid the hook. We use those terms all the time in cybersecurity. Don't take the bait, don't bite. Um, so be careful, don't click on anything without first checking on who's it from. Were you copied on the email? What are the hyperlinks, the date and time, subject line, attachments, you know, what's the content? Does this make sense to me? Is this real? Um, and then again, um, you know, the FTC has even more information on how to protect yourself, but we're going to provide you some really good information that'll be a part of the package. This is just a great slide. Um, it is, uh, we, we have this from Known Before. Valley Strong uses Known Before to provide their um, cybersecurity education and awareness and testing. And this slide just pretty much tells it all. So how do I look to see if this email is a phishing email? You know, who's it from? Do I recognize this individual? Um, you know, checking the links, checking the headers, uh, the attachments and the content. So this is provided in the package, you know, especially the hyperlinks. Is it really from who they say it is or, you know, would they be in, you know, spooked? So those are the things you really want to just take time. And I know, again, this may be redundant, but the more you look at this, it becomes muscle memory. You know, at night, you check your doors, you, you know, you turn on your alarm. Um, you know, you, you uh, maybe have to keep some lights on in your home, but a lot of those things, it's muscle memory. We all know how to cross the street to be safe. We look both ways. 
Um, hopefully we don't cross against the light, but we do at least look both ways. Um, but same thing in um, you know, phishing emails. What do we want to look for all the time and make this muscle memory? Ooh, sorry about that. And then we have, um, you know, Wi-Fi and, and mobile security. Uh, you, you've probably seen some commercials out there on the Wi-Fi. Please only use trusted Wi-Fi connections. Uh, one of the great commercials I saw was actually for um, a security um, vendor. Uh, what they had is they had this individual sitting in the lobby of a hotel and that individual had their laptop open and they created a fake Wi-Fi account that looked like the hotel's Wi-Fi account. And what they did is people that were in the, um, the lobby, oh, here's the Wi-Fi, I'll connect to that, right? Immediately connects, there's no password or anything on it. And that individual was just looking at everything that you person was doing, was capturing user IDs and passwords, you know, he was getting all the information that he needed. Um, so we want to be very careful on our Wi-Fi connections. And in, as I just mentioned, ensure your mobile security devices, uh, your mobile uh, devices are secure. They're just like your PCs. Um, they're used, um, you know, to, you know, make your life convenient, you know, um, to be able to do everything you want, your online banking and all those things, but make sure that they're secure and you're using the right security tools and also know how to handle those, you know, voicemails that you get asking for your fi financial information or the calls and the text messages as we've already spoke about. You know, if there's a way that someone can um, steal from you, they will exploit it to the fullest extent. So we just have to be as aware of possible as we can be. So how do I um, understand and block mobile attacks? Here's another great sheet that will be provided. It's from known before. 20 ways we could look at that. You know, Wi-Fi, the apps, you know. Don't uh, allow your device to auto-join unfamiliar networks. Turn, turn off your Bluetooth uh, if you're not using it. That's a great thing to do. It'll save on your battery, too. Um, and, and make sure you know what your, your phone is uh, connecting to. Know the apps that you have on your phone. Keep it clean, too. Don't have any apps on your phone that you're not using. Um, under, you know, we talked about the smishing uh, phishing attacks, which is for texting and the voice phishing attacks. And the browser, you know, watch out for ads and giveaways. Remember the rule, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably isn't. So this is a, a great sheet for you to review and take a look at and say, okay, I need to do these things. Also make sure your passwords or your PIN is long enough and not something easily guessable on your phone. Um, and it, it, th these are just things that you need to think about and then measure the risks that you want to take or, or, or accept. Okay, we're time for questions. Thanks, Anna. And yes, we have some more. Um, we had a few more come through. Um, I think you just covered it uh, before, okay. and it was after this question came through, but more or less you were talking about um, phone scams. And so I just like to remind everyone that um, it is the holiday season, and so yes. it is the time for giving. And so you might see, you might get a phone call or you might see um, things online, you know, requesting for help. And so if you don't know, you know, um, if that person is legitimate or if that, uh, that group or whoever's requesting uh, assistance, you know, please don't, you know, give them your banking information. Um, Please, if, if, it, if you want to make a donation, please reach out to the organization yourself. You can look up their phone number online um, and then call them directly and make a donation that way. Um, we did receive a question on that on coronavirus or holiday charities. So just kind of wanted to say that. Um, we did have a question on, uh, someone asked, you know, you mentioned, you know, if there's trouble, call the police. And so they asked for the I assume the local uh, police department's number. And so I want to give that to you, 661, I'm sorry, 661-327-7111. Again, that phone number is 661-327-7111.
and that's the phone number to the Bakersfield Police Department. Thank um, you. Moving forward, uh, we have uh, someone who asked, who says, I often click remind me later when I get software update notifications. Is there a risk of putting off uh, the software and operating system updates? Oh, there's a very big risk with putting off uh, software uh, updates because a lot of times they include security um, updates um, to fix bugs that are on your computer or your mobile devices or even your software, your apps that you have. So installing the software updates will give you the latest security um, updates, which is very important because the bad actors out there take advantage of unpatched systems um, and, and many I set mine to auto update I just let them auto update so I don't even have to think about it so that's something that you may want to consider um, but also go back to the um, you know the sites that you know are tugging on our hearts wings uh, heart strings because we want to do good things and we want to help other organizations as mentioned before just validate that organization that you want to give money to and call them directly and work with them directly and not respond to emails or text messages that you may receive um, very good. A uh, second question uh, we have, uh, I've noticed that um, my Wi-Fi router, or router and yeah, other I devices think. that I come across, they come with a default factory set password. Is it okay to keep those passwords or should I, should I change them? Yeah, we're going to actually talk a little bit more about that. Um, but yes, definitely change anything with a default password because they are usually available on the manufacturing websites. And believe me, the uh, bad actors know that and they will try that. They will try the default, the passwords that were set with the devices or any software they may, you, you may be using, always change um, the default passwords. I have one more question on passwords. Uh, is it safe to entrust online services that claim to safeguard sensitive passwords, storing them in the cloud, and then uh, they secure them with a master password? Is it okay to use those online services? Yeah, so password vaults are very safe, um, but what you want to do is before, because there's several vendors out there, you want to do some research on the one that you want to use because um, uh, there's free ones, um, but they're not, they're a little cumbersome and ones that you pay for will, will um, help you a little bit more slowly and saving your passwords. But don't save your passwords in the browsers and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, the, the password vault, vendor, vault vendors are very good, um, but just take a look and see which ones are the top ones today, you know, because they does change over time um, and the ones that meet your your financial need if you're um, paying for them but there's a handful of them out there there are very good and some are some work more easily than others you know that might save a lot of headaches for some people who have tons of passwords I personally use the same password for everything which is probably not a good idea because no. <laughs> that you find out what my password is then you have access to everything my entire life yeah, and we're actually going to talk all about passwords. You know, the one thing we all should be doing, but we're not, and the bad actors know that. So, all right. So, Anna, let's proceed with the presentation. Thank you. So, just what we're talking about, we want you to be proactive. And I know um, this is said over and over and over again, and I educate this all the time when I do other presentations. I always talk about strong, unique passwords. Um, you need to create them, and using passphrases with numbers and letters and symbols will really help you to create that password that it's strong, but it's still you can remember it. Um, and as I just mentioned, do not store your passwords in your browser. Um, those are not secure um, and you know well-known password managers as we just mentioned password vault are you know they're they're really good uh, products out there that will help you keep track of your passwords they will encrypt them to, with the right encryption they will keep them safe for you um, but this again just take a look out on the internet and, and look for some of the um, you know top ones out there um, on a Google search and then evaluate the company and decide which one works best for you Anytime you can consider multi-factor authentication, please do. 
So if you're logging into your bank, um, your bank or um, any financial service, sometimes you can opt for that multi-factor authentication um, to say, okay, anytime I log in, um, I want to be sent a code on my phone. Um, many organizations will do that when you're changing your passwords. They'll send you an email that your password's been changed. You know, and of course, if you didn't change your password, you know, call the institution immediately because there, there could be an issue there. Um, so those are things you just really want to protect your, your, your user um, credentials. And your password is the first gate into anything that you're managing online. And one of the things that was just mentioned is, you know, if you're using your a personal password, the same one for your social media account as you're using for your financial accounts, please don't do that. Um, social media accounts, um, you know, they don't have the same security as your financial institutions do. Um, use separate different passwords for that. Don't use the same work passwords for your social media accounts or even for your financial accounts. Keep them all unique and separate. It's very important for you to do that because once the bad actor fix, figures out your password and if it's the same across the board, they'll be going after all those other um, uh, you know, uh, financial applications that you're using or services. Um, and watch your personal information. Please do not share any personal information, including, as we mentioned before, social security numbers, credit card, or banking information, unless you have confirmed the source. Please, I can't emphasize that enough. I wish these things weren't working anymore, and I, and I wish um, that the people that have become victims of these um, very bad individuals, you know, if we take some certain precautions, it would help make it more difficult for them not to be able to get your information. You know, longer the password, the better. Um, I'm saying here use 12 characters, 14 is better. Um, being unpredictable and creative with your passwords by using numbers, symbols, and capital letters and lowercase. I know this sounds tedious, and how am I going to remember that? And that's where you use strong uh, passphrases to remember combination of words that are meaningless together. Uh, and don't use, um, <clears throat> you know, string of user, uh, dic dic um, <clears throat> excuse me. Dictionary words, um, those are very easily cracked. If you just use the one and the um, explanation that these are things that the hackers already know and they have it in their toolbox. A lot of people use house, one, two, three, explanation. These are terrible passwords because the, the hackers know what are the passwords that are being used today. They're easily hackable. They are very well organized. And, and even if, if they are very well organized, but they don't have certain skill sets that are needed. They can always buy the malware from someone who's, you know, um, more developed in how to write malware. They can buy it. It's actually a service today. You can actually buy <coughs> ransomware. Ransomware. Oh, I'm, excuse me one minute. <coughs> you can buy ransomware malware for very cheap out there and you can start launching your own ransomware attack even though you don't know how to write the code. So I, I know I got a couple of slides here on passwords, but I cannot emphasize it enough. So having an obvious password like, you know, capital P, most people capitalize the first letter of their password and then they will change an S to a dollar sign and they will change um, an O to a zero. And many people end their passwords with a number one. And so these, again, are in the toolbox of the uh, bad actors. And um, they utilize this to you know, crack your password. So for an example, um, so we're going to use a, a dictionary word such as cat. But how can we make this a good password? Again, 12 should be, is the place where we want to go. But we would do a capital D. I probably would capitalize another letter in here. Um, and then you have cat with two Ts. And then you have some numbers and an explanation and then an at sign. You know, any way you can, you know, scramble that up and um, have meaning for you for your memory would be good. But at the same time, you at least have a more defensible password that's not as easily cracked. And as always, never use company names, never use your username. Most financial institutions will block that. Don't use your social security number, your date of birth. Um, your social security number is probably already out. 
on, on the internet. Um, a lot of ours, ours, ours from years and years of uh, issues of that information not being protected. Your date of birth or any relative names and your kids' names and stuff, don't use those as passwords. Um, they're very easily crackable. Um, be smart, be vigilant, and really manage your passwords by using different passwords for different accounts, as I mentioned before. Social accounts should have different passwords. Your financial account should be your strongest passwords. Um, and when you're using secure your mobile phone, um, protect that mobile phone as it's if your PC. Um, make sure you have, if you have, um, you know, an Apple have find my phone on there. But one of the things I, I really want to emphasize, um, you know, I know individuals that, you know, they have find my phone, which is really good because it might be that you left it in the car or you left it at the restaurant and, and now you can shut down your accounts if you need it, need to until you recover your phone. But usually if your phone is walking and you can see that it's moving, it, it, it's a phone. You know, don't go chase the person that may have that phone. You know, you can call the police, you can do those things, but don't put yourself in harm's way for, for, for your phone because if it's moving, it's probably that someone stole it, um, unless it's one of your friends that has it for you, but they'll, they'll get it back to you. So just be very careful when you use that, find my phone and it's moving. Um, you don't, and, or if you, if you find out it's at a location you've never been to, call the police. Please don't go there yourself. You, it's not worth it. Um, and, and of course, if you feel your password has been compromised, change all your passwords. I know it's a pain, especially if you have 10 or 20 of them. Change all your passwords because if one's compromised, chances are the other ones are too. I can't talk enough about the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. They have tremendous information for protecting your identity and what to do. Because, you know, if you're a victim of identity theft, it's a horrible feeling. And there's a lot of things that you need to start taking action on. Um, you know, if someone's opened an account, filed taxes uh, fraudulently or made purchases, um, you know, please visit the um, identitytheft.gov. They have great reports. They have great documentation how you can start your recovery from identity theft. And, you know, they have a plan out there for you. Here's the first, second, third, fourth thing that you need to do. Um, everywhere from like, so if you're, you're active duty, you're in the military, um, how to contact the credit bureau um, and to request an active duty alert, freeze your, cre um, freeze your credit, um, to keep your and keep how to keep your personal information secure. They provide a lot of great information there, and identity theft protection services out there that can help you. They're low cost. They can monitor your identity for you. Um, you know, if if you ever become a victim of identity theft, this is a great site to go to, and, and they will really help walk you through the process. So um, they have papers out there too, and you know they provide an overview of what to do, um, what to know, and what to do about identity theft. Uh, I can't um, mention um, stress enough putting a fraud alert, which is different than a freeze, and they explain all that, you know, warning signs that you might not know you're a victim, um, and but you know read the paper, warning signs of identity theft, and also let's not forget about the children. You know, they all have social security numbers too. Um, let's, you know, really understand what it takes to protect our children. And let's not forget about our parents or our grandparents. Um, you know, you want to uh, look at their credit reports, make sure that there's no accounts opened, um, that they did not open. So you have to look at the whole family, not just yourself, but, you know, these things all apply across the family. So I mentioned ransomware. This is something you never want to experience. You hit enter or you click on a phishing email and the next thing you know, um, this screen pops up. There's a lot of different ones out there. The different bad actors have many different screens that will pop up. But the one thing they will do is they will tell you everything you need to know to pay them. Um, you will see that, you know, what is Bitcoin? Because you're going to probably pay them with Bitcoin. How do you get Bitcoin wallet? You know, how do you buy Bitcoin? And how do you send them the Bitcoin? 
Um, and then if you don't do this quickly, um, we're going, they're going to destroy all your files on your PC. Um, and this is, you know, a serious threat, not just to businesses, but to individuals. And it, it's just a horrible place to be. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can prevent yourself from being a victim of a cyber, uh, of a ransomware attack. Um, what they do is, you know, they're threatening to destroy everything on your, your PC. And if you don't have it backed up, you're trying to figure out what you need to do. How they probably launched the attack is because they sent you an email and you might have clicked on an attachment that appeared legitimate. It could be an invoice or, oh, it's electronic fax. They come in all different shapes and forms. Um, a lot of times the emails are extremely well constructed. They're not sloppy like they used to be, so they can not fool you. So as I mentioned before, pause before you act and ensure that it's a legit email before you collect. Um, and then once they infect your machine, uh, the malware will begin to encrypt all the files and the folders on your local drives. Anything you have attached, so if your backup drives are attached to your um, PC, they're probably going to get encrypted. Uh, any other computers at your home that are on the same network will get com uh, probably get encrypted also. Um, and then they're going to, you know, tell you that you may have you know, you can get all your information back if you pay the ransom, and the ransom can vary from all different kinds of price ranges. Um, and, and they're very, they, they, they really put the fear in you that you're not going to get your information uh, back. And you probably won't if you're not prepared. Um, even if you pay the ransom, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get the encryption keys to unencrypt um, all your files. Um, they're changing all the time. The ransomwares are, like I mentioned, getting more sophisticated than they were years ago. Um, they can buy them as a service. So someone took, you know, great pain in making those emails look really good. Um, and again, these, all these uh, bad actors that don't really have the talent to launch ransomware attack, they don't need it because they just buy all the code and everything that goes with it to um, launch them. And then they sit back and they just wait. They watch TV as the money's rolling in. Um, the ransomware attacks and malware continue to evolve. They're not going to stop. They're up by hundreds of percent um, since COVID-19. Um, and But if you have your backups of your family pictures and other important documentation, you can survive a ransomware attack. If you do all the other things that we're talking about, hopefully you'll never be a victim of ransomware attack. But if you become a victim, if you do these things, this, this will really help you. And then we'll talk a little bit about the backups. You know, if you become a victim of a ransomware attack, if you can, if you know somebody that works in IT that can help you through the process, um, at your local law enforcement, you can call them. Also, you can identify, uh, you know, identify where your backups are, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that before the attack, right? Not after the attack. You should. You, this is helping you to prepare. Uh, you report the incident to the FBI Internet Crimes of Complaint Center. They really want to know. You know, the FTC and the FBI want to know about any any uh, criminals that are approaching you through voicemail. Um, phone calls, texting, or emails. They really want you to report it because the more information they get, they gather all the information, they analyze all the information, and they provide all the information back to us on their website so we can be even more prepared of the new attacks that are happening today. So you have the FBI, you have the CISA, and of course the FTC all want to know about any attacks that you may be suffering or any scamming that you may, you, you may become, not just a victim of, but you know, you prevented the attack from affecting you, but please still report it. So um, don't click on emails. You don't know who they're from. Make sure your PC and laptop and operating system is patched. A lot of times this malware is exploiting unpatched systems, um, just not the hardware, but also the software. Um, keep, you know, Keep your PC and laptop clean. If you don't have software, if you have software on your PC or laptop and you're not using it anymore, delete it. And I can't emphasize enough, think before you click. 
ensure your antivirus and anti-malware solutions are set to automatically update because you're constantly getting updates from them, constantly getting updates from them. Um, and then conduct regular scans, you know, set it up that the scans are, are being done, you know, daily or weekly or whatever you're comfortable with. And one of the things we were talking about is back up your data regularly and verify the integrity of those backups. The backup rule is three, two, one. You want to have three copies of your, your data that's really important to you that you, you really don't ever want to live without. You're going to store two, two backup copies on different storage media. And then one of them is then located offsite. You know, you could do the cloud. Um, and then that one you want to make sure, you know, it's, it's, um, it's offsite and it's off network, right? So if the ransomware attacks your PC, they can't get to your backup. Um, very important, you know, make sure that, it, that those backups are not connected to the computer and the networks that you're backing up. Very important. Securing your home network, um, we talked a little bit about that. You, you need to secure your wireless router. You have to change the name of, you should change the name of your router and definitely change the name, uh, the password on your router. You know, um, very dangerous not to change those. Um, this is, you know, one of your first lines of defense. Review the security guide uh, options that you have. Um, hopefully you're all using WAP. Too, um, and um, there's a lot of great information out there why that's that's what you want to use. Everything else, the security levels aren't there what you need. Um, create a guest uh, guest password. Um, make sure your guest not you know your guest wireless is not the one you're using for your wireless. Make sure it's separate. The Internet of Things. If you have um, anything like your thermostat. Alexa, or any of those other devices that we refer to as Internet of Things, you know, have them on their own wireless. Um, and please make sure you look at the firewall rules. Um, if, you, if you work, you know, make sure you set up your firewall. It's, they're pretty straight and easy to set up now on the PCs. Um, make, make sure you go through that effort because this will help you keep the hackers from using your device to send out your personal information without your permission. Um, you know, antivirus uh, software scans of incoming email and files is very important. Um, you know, that's how the firewall acts. It, it guards your front door. A little bit of redundancy, um, but a quick, uh, some other quick tips is, you know, keep your secure software uh, update it, just not your security software, but any software that you have. Make sure it's updated so it has all the latest security patches on it. Um, USBs and external devices can be affected with viruses. Make sure you scan those before they connect to your, um, your PC. And it's any devices, you know, your gaming systems, anything that's web enabled can be hacked, if, and it will be. Uh, for your banking sites and your financial sites, your shopping sites, make sure that, you know, the link is HTTPS. That means it's security measures have been taken to secure your, your connection. If it's HTTP, please don't use it because it is not secure. FTC has great information on online security because the internet is great for many reasons. I mean, it's really helped doctors um, connect with their patients. It's really done a lot of great things, but it's also provided um, the bad guys the opportunity to um, coordinate, to learn from each other, um, and you know, just obtain such much information they normally would never attain to cause you harm. So it's very important that you protect your computer. It's like your front door. Um, and if you want to, um, you know, learn about the latest ripoffs, you can go to the FTC website and sign up for free consumer alerts from FTC or actually just go to the FTC website and, you know, take an hour or two and, and take a look at all the scams that are out there today. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, it's endless. 
as I mentioned before, um, the FTC online security, they have everything you need to know. And then they probably would send you off to other sites if you need to know more. But like when you look at computer and mobile security, you know, computer security, there's whole papers on that. Malware, laptop security, how to protect your phone. We provided some of that information, but there's even more information there. Um, securing your, your wireless network, it'll, it'll probably be more information that you, you probably need, but it's really just a, a great source of information. And, you know, the common scams that are out there today, you know, the romance scams that are out there, you know, if, if, they, if they think you're, you will go for the scam, they probably have one out there. You know, whatever it may be, they tug on your heart, your heart strings with the pet scams that are going out there today. People want to buy pets because they're home or maybe, you know, um, you know, they just need some comfort. And, and for whatever the reason is, the pet scams are just unbelievable today of what they're doing and how they're ripping off the consumer who are just trying to get a pet, you know, to, you know, put a smile on their face and, and make their family a little bit more happier in these times. But they're really taking advantage of everything and everything they can. The FTC has a great site out there, um, how to recognize phishing attacks that we've already kind of talked about, how to protect yourself, um, what to do if you're a victim of a phishing attack, how to respond, and how to re report it. So if you're if you are um, if you get a phishing attack and you know not to click on it and you're you're doing real well with that, still report it. And you know there's a couple of sites that you can report it to the UCE and the awapwg.org. And then also if you get a text message that you know is a is a smishing uh, text message, you know you can just forward it to seven seven two six again. The FCC, the FBI all want this information because they coordinate everything that's reported to understand the trends that are happening out today, to understand if there's an uptick or if something's changing with what the bad actors are doing. Here's some, um, and again, this is all provided in the document um, with the survey. Um, how, uh, Federal Trade Commission um, identify uh, identity theft, how to report and recover, the FBI uh, to report, um, Cyber Security Infrastructure Security Agency, they want to know about it too. Uh, or also like, you know, if you're a victim of um, a cyber crime, you can also, you know, call your local FBI field office or the Secret Service office. This is just a great uh, link uh, to the F FTC because it talks to you about, you know, more in detail about cyberbullying, how to talk to your children about cyberbullying, kids' online safety, um, mobile devices. Again, most of us think, oh, a mobile device, it's secure, we're good. Not necessarily. Um, children really have to understand what, you know, computer security how, and how to protect themselves. Uh, they have great information. Um, they talk about the parent controls that you can use. They also talk about children privacy online. Uh, we want to protect our children's privacy as much as we want to protect our own. And they also have a great site out there for kids, parents, and video games. You know, especially if uh, Fortnite, I, my kids, I, I, I don't play video games, but like Fortnite, I hear a lot about how the kids aren't doing their homework and they want to play Fortnite. There's a, just a lot of guidance out here for you to, to reach out to and um, find what you may need uh, to, you know, educate you to, you know, or, or links that you may need um, to provide information to your children and your parents and grandparents. So a few of the takeaways, please think before you click. Use strong passwords, please. Um, use a password manager, a password vault. Um, don't share your information until you confirm the source. And I know I'm very redundant here, but these things are still happening and the bad guys are taking advantage of us. Um, make sure you, know, you automate your software updates. That's very important on your security software. They should be automated. Um, and back up your data. You won't regret that because there's other reasons why you, you might need your data backed up. You know, it could be that you drop your laptop 
or um, somebody spills milk all over your laptop, whatever it may be. Just make sure you have the backup of the data that you know that you don't want to live without. At our last presentation, this is very similar to this one back in August, we had an agent from Homeland Security present um, some of the topics that we were covering today. And he had some great websites in there. Um, the, NIS, the, NIT, the Net Smarts Workshop is an excellent place for your children to learn. Um, they got a lot of videos on there, um, things that they can read that are written for children. Um, they also have things out there for your teenagers, you know, helping them make the safer choices online, great information, and as I mentioned before, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. These sites will really truly help you um, in, in any shape or form that you may need to protect your children and your family. Questions? That was a lot of information, but I think we all learned a lot actually about cybersecurity. Uh, we do have a few questions that came up. Um, when we were talking earlier about password manager, um, you suggested that anyone can go online and kind of do the research and kind of find the ones with the best reviews and the best recommended. Um, and so again, we encourage everyone to, to do the research before they they pick one. Uh, we had a viewer who, however, says, you know, I, I don't trust the internet. Can you recommend one for me? Or can you list a few that you know off the top of your head, just to give them an idea of what is real and what isn't? Well, you you know, you have like PC Magazine um, that you could look at um, that they would, um, they have the password managers. Because one of the things is you have to look at what's current today and who's doing the best jobs out there. I'm not making recommendations, but, you know, the PC, the best PC managers for 2020 is in the PC uh a magazine today and they mentioned like last pass the keeper um dash line dash lane you know there's some in there you know that and that way you can look at the you know check the price of it is it what you need but you know you can just look at the a pc magazine for that um and they they can provide you a lot more information on which one will work best for you but no i i, I understand your concern when you go searching the the internet but yeah it, you use um some of the magazines that are out there for computers and um, pc magazine has a really good article out there for their top 11 picks they'll talk to you about the pros and cons and compare the specs and and also the, the pricing point and then um the same person actually. Oh, may, oh, let me let me add one more thing. Let me add one more thing to that. So, um, in some cases, your um, internet provider sometimes provide. Um, I know, like um, Comcast, which I have, um, which is I'm in the Illinois area. So Comcast um, provides me Norton um, antivirus. Um, and with that comes with a password vault manager. So check with your local internet provider to see if you can get the antivirus and malware for free, which is a nice savings, and then see if they pr provide a, a password vault manager to go with that. And then also you can research it on P in the PC Magazine. Okay, very good. Um, we have another viewer who's asking, how safe are apps that you can download, for example, scanning documents to send? Um, how safe are the apps for scanning documents to send them? Was that the question? Yeah, how safe are apps that you can download, for example, scanning documents to send? Um, well, you know, um, so when you look at apps to do the scanning of documents, you have to look at the app and what they offer and what other security controls they're providing. That's a very difficult question to ask without knowing which app that the individual's looking at. But it's like looking, you know, you have to do that research and, and understand what security controls are they providing for the scanning. So if they're just scanning it and it's on the internet and they're scanning it, what's their privacy statement? What's their security statement that they're making? That they're not gonna share your information? 
um, you have to run through that whole gamut of really understanding what they're going to do with the information you're scanning and putting up in the cloud. Most of them, uh, the legit ones out there today, will have a really good privacy statement that they don't share your information, that they'll protect your information, and those are pretty clear and, and it's very straightforward for the very legit companies that are out there to do the scanning of documents. Very good. Um, another question is, what should a person do after they have been hacked? How can you restore your PC? Oh, so um, if you've been hacked, now we'll say it's not a ransomware, which is because you're going to be restoring your PC if you have a ransomware. Um, and you have your backups, you're in really good shape. And let's say you're not um, an IT person, um, but you probably know an IT person that can help you restore your computer. What they're going to probably do is they're going to wipe it and rebuild it for you. Now there's um, vendors out there that will do that for you. Um, and again, I'm not making any recommendations, but Best Buy has the Geek Squad. Um, you can, and of course, they're going to charge you for that. But if you know someone in the family that's uh, an IT person, I'm sure they will help you out to do a restore because you really want to wipe uh, to make sure everything's clean. But if you have an antivirus and malware, um, what happens is they will scan your machine for known viruses and malware that are out there, and they will eradicate them for you. So you have to decide oh, how badly were you hacked? Um, did your antivirus and malware not pick it up for whatever reason? Um, and then you have to decide, okay, I need to wipe my device, and I know my backups are good, and my backups are clean. Uh, another question, uh, is a VPN a good idea? A virtual private network? Yes. And, and the reason is, is it's a secure connection. So when, whatever, like many companies use VPNs um, and like, you know, Cisco provides, um, the, you know, their VPN solution, but they provide a lot of um, you know, bells and whistles to go with it. Um, but the VPN is a virtual private network, so it's a secure connection to connection, yes. Okay. Now, um, I know that, you know, it's a coincidence that you talked about pet adop adop adoption scams because yeah. someone asked about, you know, pet adoption scams. And uh, I think you covered it, um, but pretty much, yes, uh, there's, pet adoption scams and anything else, if you haven't requested that information, it's best that you contact the organization that can assist you with that directly um, instead of you know, answering emails or clicking on links uh, for that kind of thing because you just don't know. Let me, um, let me just provide a little bit more information on that because I, I did some additional research on that because you'll see that on the news. Um, I, and I, you know, these bad guys or bad uh, actors are, are very bad and they're always tugging on our hearts uh, strings. So, you know, you know that what they'll do is they normally do um, free pets for sale, which that's <laughs> kind of, you know, free pets for sale. They say, oh, you can have the pet for free, but it's going to cost $300 for us to ship it. And then if you pay the $300, they're going to ask for more money and mo more money. And there's no pet at the end of it. Um, they're going to give you a, a, a pet that normally maybe cost four or five thousand dollars, but they're going to discount it to five hundred dollars. But the shipping is eight hundred dollars, um, and they're always asking for more money and more money. Um, and eventually, a lot of people catch on that this is a scam. Um, but what we're suggesting is, you know, because of the pet scans, um, you know, if you're not going to adopt from your local um, animal shelter, um, you know, maybe you might want to put that on hold right now. Unless you know the breeder, of course, and that's not an online scam. But if you're going to, you know, purchase on a, an animal online, online, it's 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 a very risky thing today. But there's a website called www.ipata.org backslash, and it has current pet scams. And so you can actually just Google that. Um, IPETA, um, and they have a list of all the scans. So it doesn't mean they have a complete list, right? Because the bad guys are always changing their um, websites, right? So they don't get caught. But if you could put it on hold, that's great. Um, and never pay a fee to attain an animal that you have not seen with your own eyes. Um, and if someone asks you to send money overseas, say no. <laughs> that would be the safest part. Uh, you don't want to do that. 
Um, definitely be aware of free pet offers. Um, they reuse these, uh, the same pets over and over again on the pictures and they do look adorable. But if you're planning to buy a specific breed, you know, reach out to the American Cattle Club and the American Humane Society. Um, these are good places for you to reach out to and they can, you know, direct you to a good breeder because even some of the breeders out there today aren't really legit, um, even if they're, if they're not online. So be very cautious if you're, you're purchasing a pet today. All right, well, that is it for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Um, Anna, any last words for our viewers? No, I just want everybody to stay safe and um, happy holidays. And, uh, you know, please reach out to us if you have any additional questions that we may be able to assist with. Thank you very much, Anna. And yes, um, like we said, uh, if you have any questions or you feel like your question wasn't answered to uh, the fullest, please uh, leave your contact information uh, behind so that we can assist you. Uh, we did have a uh, suggestion uh, for some of the links to be on our website. Uh, I want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and that the presentation and there's a resource guide that will be available uh, on our website. So you can check that out uh, as of tomorrow. So thank you again for joining us this evening. We hope that you enjoy the content and feel better informed about the actions that you take to help avoid becoming a victim of cybercrime. After we end the meeting, we will, you will be presented with a link to take a short survey regarding today's webinar. This is where you can ask additional questions if you feel your question wasn't answered in the presentation. Just be sure to include your contact information so that someone can reach out to you. On behalf of Anna Sharoni and Valley Strong Credit Union, we thank you and have a great night. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.